Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Church, and I'm an extension educator with the University of Idaho, and I'm stationed in Idaho County, which is in Grangeville, Idaho, which is in north central Idaho. What I'm going to talk about here today is ammoniating straw for cows. And so I'm going to share my screen now. We'll get the PowerPoint presentation going, and we'll get right into it. We'll get this going right now. There we go. I already mentioned my name and everything, so we'll just move forward. Why do we ammoniate straw and why are we talking about this topic? Uh, well, everybody knows this year, 2021, we have a real shortage of hay and ammoniated straw provides another source of forage in north central Idaho where I'm located. Uh, the hay crop is at best 50% of normal with most reports I've heard anywhere from a third to a quarter of normal as far as hay production. So we are looking for alternative forages to feed these cattle through the winter. What ammoniation does if you decide to do this is it increases straw digestibility by eight to 15%. It will increase dry matter intake 15 to 20%. And the crude protein level can, is comparable to a medium quality grass hay, which would be at about 8%. An analogy of what ammoniation does to straw is if any of you have ever gotten a book wet and if you notice that the pages will swell and kind of open up, that's exactly what happens to the fiber and straw when you ammoniate it. It breaks it down, kind of opens it up like a wet book, and so it's more uh, digestible for cattle and they can take in more. So if you're going to ammoniate, this is what the objective is, is it is to provide an airtight container in which a chemical reaction can, can occur between the straw and the anhydrous. And it takes an airtight container. A stack has to be covered. We use a six mil black plastic to cover the stack. That's the most common method. And I'll get into the dimensions of the stack and how you do this here in just a moment. But that's the objective. We want an airtight container which we can inject anhydrous ammonia in there and have a chemical reaction to get a treatment and to get the, the kind of forage that we want. So which straws are best to ammoniate? And to begin with, uh, oat straw would be most palatable for cattle if you're feeding it just plain. Oat straw is the most palatable. Barley straw would be second and then wheat straw would be third in terms of palatability. So it's the same way if you're gonna ammoniate, straw would be best barley straw second and wheat straw would be third. Okay, so I'm gonna get right with it because we want this uh, video to be kind of short. And so uh, at the end, I'll give you some contact information. If you're interested in doing this, you can get a hold of me and uh, we can talk some more. But to begin with, you need to select a dry level spot to where you can ammoniate that straw. It needs to be accessible uh, for vehicles, because you'll need to be able to get tractors in there. You'll need to be able to get the anhydrous ammonia tank to it. But you want to place it, make sure, downwind from any buildings or livestock so that uh, if there's an accidental spill, there won't be a disaster on your hands. Okay, the design of the stack, the plastic we normally use for a stack is a 40 foot by 100 foot, six mil black plastic. And when you cover the stack, there should be two to three feet remaining on each side so that you can cover it up with dirt to provide that airtight atmosphere that I was talking about. Here's a picture that shows dimensions of a stack and um, whether it be small squares or whether it be the big squares, a 70 foot, two foot long stack, 14 feet wide and about 10 feet high uh, will fit under a 40 by 100 foot black plastic. So that would be the dimensions. Again, 72 feet long, 14 feet wide, and 10 feet high. If you're going to use round bales, this would be uh, the, the dimensions that would fit under a 40 by 100 foot tarp. It's a six bale pyramid, 14 to 15 bales long, depending on how big your bales are. So you go three, two, one, and that would be just perfect to fit under a 40 by 100 foot uh, tarp. The next thing, 
vitally important is you need to know the moisture content of the straw. You also need to know how much each of those bales weigh so you know how much uh, anhydrous ammonia to apply. But again, this is extremely important. If you cannot get a moisture content in that straw of at least 12%, it's not worth doing. You'll be wasting your money and the cost of the anhydrous and the materials. 15 to 20% moisture is preferred. So why is this? Well, anhydrous ammonia seeks moisture. And so if you want to get that anhydrous to penetrate those bales, especially those really uh, well-packed large square bales, you're gonna have to have moisture in there in order for it to go through that material to, uh, to cure. So that's why moisture content is extremely important. This year, it's so dry. I don't know if we can get that kind of moisture unless you wait till fall when we're getting some heavy dew at night or we get a light rain, that'd be the best time to bale it. Again, at least 12% moisture in that straw or else you might as well not do it. It won't cure in a low moisture uh, content level. It just won't penetrate it because it's not attracted to it. Again, anhydrous ammonia, it uh, seeks moisture. And so that's why you've got to have a higher moisture content in the straw. So let's say you're able to get that kind of moisture content, you get it bailed up and uh, you're gonna go ahead and do it. Well, after you stack it, remember those dimensions that I gave you, six bale pyramid, 14 to 15 bales long, or the 72 feet by 14 by 10 high on the square bales. Anyway, dig a trench with uh, a lot of times a back blade works well, it only has to be about six inches deep or so. And that might be a factor in where you locate the stack so that you've got uh, soil you can, if it's just solid rock, you can have a hard time, but you need to be able to dig a little trench about six inches uh, deep. Then you, once you cover the bales and, uh, and you place that dirt on top, I'm gonna get into that a little bit more. You need to purchase three 12 feet, foot by uh, one inch PVC pipe, uh, plug, the end of each of those pipe with a fitting and glue it on there. Then take a, a power drill uh, and use a 3 8 inch bit and you drill holes in that pipe at one foot intervals all on the same side only going through one side. Don't go clear through the pipe which is one side and uh, drill uh, 3 8 inch holes at every foot interval. You want to talk with your anhydrous ammonia supplier, so any chemical, ag chemical fertilizer dealer can help you here, but ask them what kind of fitting you need on the end of those pipes and what kind of valves. And uh, so that's critical too. Make sure you've got all that information before you get started. Insert the pipes in the stack after you've got, uh, before you get them covered rather. And um, you want to divide the stack, that 72 foot length in about you know, a third quarters or third, so you can put those three pipes in there between the bales and you put them about five feet up with the holes down is how you want to point it. And so again, if you look at this diagram, I'll try to get this uh, cursor here, you'd put one about there, one in the middle and one there, and uh, that's where your pipes would be. And if you're going to do round bale stack, put your pipes, they show them here, but actually you wanna get them off the ground if you can, put them right here uh, above that first tier. And again, point those uh, holes downward. And then you cover the stack and lay the extra in the trench and cover it with the dirt to make an airtight seal. And you wanna puncture the plastic where those pipes come out. On the round bale stack, you only have two pipes coming out. On those, uh, you know, the square bales, you'd have three. Make sure you seal it up with duct tape. You want to have several rows of duct tape around so you can seal stuff like that. And any any holes you might find in that black plastic, you want to you want to seal. Now, how much do you apply? You put 60 pounds of anhydrous ammonia per ton of dry matter. That's why it's important to know what each of those bales weigh so that you know how much anhydrous to apply. When you order it at know what you need and have your supplier deliver in, in a portable tank or on the back of a truck or whatever, 
just the amount that you need so that you just bleed that amount in there and you don't have to worry about being right there if it runs out. But you got to make sure that the valves and the pipe connections are all leak free and you want to apply that ammonia real slow at about 500 pounds per hour or else you'll get a lot of ballooning and it'll scare the daylights out of you the first time you do it. Safety, extremely important. And again, like I mentioned, anhydrous ammonia will seek moisture. So it will cause severe burns to skin, eyes, and the mouth. And so it's extremely important that this is handled with extreme caution. You need to wear protective clothing, respirator, goggles, rain gear, rubber gloves, everything that you would with a toxic uh, a product. So be extremely careful with this. Matter of fact, what I would do is talk to your chemical dealer, see if they'll work with you and maybe send a tech out to help you with this or maybe even do it. Okay. And hydrous ammonia can be explosive. So make sure no smoking around it or lighted fires anywhere near the stack. Okay. How long will it take for this to cure after you apply? If the daytime temperatures are in the 80s, it doesn't take very long. Matter of fact, in the first week, it'll be 75% cured. Uh, it will be completely done in three weeks. If the temperatures are below 60, then you're looking at 48 weeks, depending on how cold it is, to cure. And again, I can't emphasize it enough. There has to be moisture in those bales. It has to be at least 12% moisture in order to get a cure whatsoever. Okay, if you're going to feed it, uh, stack should remain covered until you feed. And the reason for this is, is if you open, remember I talked about that book analogy, you open up those fibers, that means that it can, can uh, really rot in a hurry from any kind of an environment because it can get into that fiber or that uh, straw real easy because we've broken down those fibers. So uh, it should remain closed and covered until you're about ready to feed. So you open up one end of the stack about, uh, oh, three, four, five days, maybe a week ahead of when you're gonna start feeding and open up one end, the rest of the stack remains covered. And uh, then you can open it up and then go to feeding in about three and five days or a week. This is what it'll look like, kind of has a caramel color to it after it's been treated. And you see how they just open up one end here and they're feeding off that uh, one end. And as they go back, they'll just uncover it as they're feeding. Okay, real quick. And if you want to ration on, on the Modi Ying straw, get a hold of your nutritionist or one of the university extension people, they can help you. But it can be fed free choice with supplemental alfalfa to provide a little more uh, protein and uh, make sure you have trace minerals and vitamins available. And it should be fed to mid gestation cows Save your better hay for the late gestation and, or after uh, calving, feed your better hay. And again, seek help in developing rations. Okay, what is it gonna cost? I priced anhydrous ammonia here a week ago and it is very, very expensive right now. So the cost of this may make it prohibitive to ammoniate. Uh, right now, if you do everything I just talked about, you're looking at a cost of about 90 to $100 a ton to treat that straw. And that's with uh, buying straw as well. And I price the straw at about $40 to $50. And it may be more than that. You'll just have to look into this, the costs that you're going to have before you uh, actually do it. But just as a rough ballpark figure, 90 to 100 bucks is what it looks like it'll cost. Again, this has been kind of a quick uh, overview of anhydrous uh, ammonia and uh, ammonia eating straw. But a couple of pointers I hope that you've picked up from this. Look at the expense right now. It's very expensive and hydrous ammonia is. And so make sure it's worth it. It may be, might be just as well just to feed straw untreated and uh, it'll work fine. And we're gonna have a video on this uh, website on just feeding straw and using that in a wintering ration. So look for that, but uh, you're gonna have to weigh that out. And right now, I, it might be cheaper just to feed the straw untreated and straight. And another thing, I've said it now twice, I'm gonna say it the third time. In order to get a cure, when you treat that straw, there has to be moisture in it. 
that could be a problem this year. At least 12%, you'll need to get a, a moisture uh, probe so you can know what's in there. Uh, otherwise, you'll be wasting extremely expensive anhydrous ammonia and you won't get the cure that you want if there's not moisture in there. 15 to 20% is uh, more desirable. Well, if you want to talk to me in more detail, because this has been a quick video about ammonia straw or maybe even feeding straw in a winter cow ration, this is my contact information. You can get a hold of me at 208-983-2667 uh, or email me at jchurch at universityofidaho.edu or at uidaho.edu. Well, it's been good visiting with you here today. And again, contact me if you have more questions.